Oh, I figured now's a good time to take a long-term look at this patrol and specifically the frame protection. So it's quite windy out today. It's a bit stormy. It's been raining on and off all day. Good weather, but overall, I don't mind a bit of rain. Now, all my bikes, sun's coming out now, that's good. All my bikes, I put the 3M frame protection on. So I've had this for 18 months. Probably maybe a little bit longer, 19 months. And the day I got it, I put this 3M protective film. It's just the clear stuff. Pretty much over the entire frame. You can see I missed a few spots. You know, this stuff here. Uh, down here. Where I'm getting a couple of chips, which is, on the next one I'll definitely extend it and uh, cover that whole lot. But overall, a fair bit of cover all the way around the top tube because you're always grabbing stuff and scratching it and lifting your bike up from the top tube but it's only really peeled in one spot and I just ended up just cutting that or chewing it off so right there it peeled a little bit just here uh, so I cut it so I didn't continue peeling but otherwise all of the rounded edges that I created when I cut it and uh, glued it on or stuck it on now bear in mind that I stuck this on dry I didn't use the water method I didn't use the wet method I've used a wet method before and it's I don't seem to get as good uh, finish so I'm not not into the wet application so I apply it dry so clean the frame flawless even just get a little bit of a blower and blow it blow it off once you've cleaned it and dried it just so you've got nothing sitting on it uh, but this frame still more or less looks new. It's so good. It's in such good condition. All because of this frame tape. So, you know, you look down here. Let's have a look underneath it. Comes up to there. Simple process. I mean, you've got to spend the time. It is time consuming. It gives it this gloss finish as well. It gives us this nice nice shiny finish on a otherwise dull paint job so this is about $45 worth of worth of tape and probably two hours three hours work if you're really good at it you could probably do it quicker um, I'm you know fairly particular I like to do it properly and saying that other people have done a much better job than me stuff like this but it's just it keeps your bike so good it keeps your bike in such good condition like look at this yeah I cut that a little bit of extra effort to make that shape has oh it's so good the, it's just in such good condition obviously it's had a bit of a beating but if you want to protect your bikes and make sure they hold resale value and just look good you you know look good feel good if your bike looks good you kind of yeah you, know, you always feel happy with it so same if you look in the mirror and you look like a scrub you probably feel like a bit of a scrub but if you can tidy yourself up a bit you know boost your self esteem a little bit same as your bike if your bike looks good you're always going to be happy to ride it and you're going to be frothing every time you get on it so and if it feels good obviously it's a bonus too uh magneg running the super deluxe on the back because I couldn't really get where I wanted with the DPX2. This frame, this this shot, the, the, the frame itself, the patrol, so ignore the rear shock and the forks and whatever, the frame itself has very little progression, uh, very little support. So when I bought it, I couldn't demo one, when I bought it, it was touted as bike of the year two years in a row, this one and then the... the uh, previous version was a bike of the year as well and killer bikes really really good bikes but there's no support there so you got to run it real deep in the travel with a lot of spaces to get uh, that well that's how they they recommended it be set up 30 yeah 35 percent sag 30 to 35 um, and the way the shock the dpx2 comes configured you you can't run any shallower in the sag than 35 uh, percent because of the uh, how choppy it is with that 0.6 spacer in it. So I've been back and forth. I've been up and down 
so much different messing around with with shocks and configurations and uh i've wound up right right now we're going back again i'm always experimenting always messing around i've got the minion dhr2 on the back now dh casing i'll never run anything but a dh casing in the dhr2 because they all tear the d the double downs not too bad but exos they're just rubbish they just tear uh dhf way better than an exo but anyway suspension platform back on the magneg i've currently got it at all four bands in and three and a half tokens in the rear in the positive chamber and what I've also found is the I weighed the Nardog token so the RockShox Nardog token and the standard tokens and the Nardogs actually if you go purely by weight I know they go by volume but it's all made of the same stuff so the volume must be you know somewhere at least close correlated to to the weight so the weight of one standard token is 3.8 grams and the weight of the nardog was 8.6 grams so it's more like two and a quarter instead of two and a half so um, i guess i've got three and a quarter spaces i was at three spaces just three standard spaces and it felt so good it felt sublime really really plush uh had me in the perfect sag point in the travel which is just a hair over 30 percent close to 31 percent probably about 31 percent this thing rails and still carries speed well and isn't too choppy at the end of the end of the stroke so what i've done is i just wanted a little bit more a little bit of a stronger spring so I've gone to the three and a half thinking maybe I'm gonna end up at four and a half and a little deeper in the sag but if I go deeper in the sag it's pedal strike city so 35% you're just gonna smash your pedals on everything uh, I'd prefer the 30% I prefer how this rides at about 30% 31 um, but also trying to get rid of that wooden feeling in the end of the shock so the reason I'm talking about the shock stroke is a bike with good progression built into the suspension platform doesn't rely on the rear shock to ramp up which means you can set up the rear shock really really supple here comes the rain real supple and uh and it works really well but if you have to create support in your shock due to the lack of support in the suspension stroke you end up having a wooden feeling at the end of your stroke because your your shock has to ramp up so hard to create resistance uh, rather than the resistance coming naturally from the from the arc of the suspension so I'm still back and forth I'd like a bike with better platform other than that all the angles are killer on this bike it's so strong uh, pedals killer uh, obviously you know it'll bob a little bit it's a 160 mil travel rear suspension so it will bob uh, but it, the pedaling positions killer I love climbing this thing uh, head angles wicked slays never gets uncomfortable the bike's always comfortable everywhere I put it it's fast and it's comfortable but a more progressive rear end it equals a faster bike you can run the shock you, you've got more freedom with the shock you got more freedom with setup if you've got a progressive linkage uh, here you've already you, you're kind of governed you've got a smaller window of compliance and a smaller window of of, uh, of optimal setup with something like this so still messing around with the magneg i reckon it's pretty good still it, as it is it's way better than i could find with the dpx2 uh charges hard it's way more supple it's it's good it probably needs a service to be honest that that super Lux has been on there forever so uh, maybe due for a service I'll get that happening but anyway frame tape protect your bike it's so good it's done a killer job and you know you can see in all the photos that I post on it the bike still looks mint there's no real dings and scratches except for this this stuff here it's killer so uh, protect your bike 3M protective tape or automotive film I get it from Terra Auto Distributors here in Thebiton Adelaide SA 
uh, but I guess you can get it on eBay. Don't ask me for the uh, fine details on it because I've got no idea exactly what the product number or anything like that is. I just know it as uh, clear 3M protective film or protective tape or automotive tape. So, yeah. And so far, so good with the DHR2 on the back, DH Max Grip. It's going to wear ridiculously quickly, but uh, it feels as good to climb on as my aggressor with a uh, aggressor double down with a cush core in it. Uh, I had the High Roller 2 on the back briefly, and the DHR2 DH on the front, and the High Roller 2 was just honestly was a slug in the Max Grip DH 2.4. The High Roller 2 was an absolute slug. Once I took it off, I was back to climbing freely. It Literally, on a, on a I think it's an 11-minute climb, um, I was two and a half minutes slower just tr burying myself trying to get up. And uh, I wasn't into it. I wasn't into it. Once I put the DHF Max Grip XO back on the front and the DHR2 DH on the rear, it was back to reasonably fast. So more on that soon. And uh, I'll put a few more miles on this DHR2 and give you a good idea of how it feels. But so far, it's killer on the back. Um, yeah, the only thing I don't like is not having rim protection, not having a cush core in there. So I might even end up getting the cush core XC inserts because they're a little bit lighter, still the same density foam, and uh, maybe a little bit easier to install and take out with still adequate protection. So yeah, that's it for now. Right on.